morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. The peace of the Lord be with you. And I'll go with you. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 556. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Hymn number 556. Oh, come, 
Let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Come, we our joy to the Lord. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land, for his hands have formed it. Come, bring out our joy to the Lord. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Come, come bring out our joy to the Lord. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Do not harden your hearts as at Moriah and on the day of Massa in the wilderness, when your ancestors tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. Come, we are our Lord. For forty years I have loathed that generation and said, They are a people whose hearts go astray, and they do not regard my ways. Therefore, in my anger I swore, they shall not enter my rest. Come, we have our joy this morning. Our gospel reading this morning can be found in John 4. John 4, verses 5 through 42. John 4, 5 through 42. So he came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, named the field that Jacob gave to his sons Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And so Jesus, weary as he was with his journey, sat down beside the well. And it was about the sixth hour. Then came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that a Jew asks, asks a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked and he would have given it, you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where do you give that where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself and his sons? And his cattle, Jesus said, and everyone who drinks of this water will never thirst. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. The water that I shall give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. And Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have five husbands, and whom you now have is not your husband that you say truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And you said that Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, before me, the hour is coming when now on this mountain, nor in Jerusalem, will you worship the Father. You worship that you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. For the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. God is spirit, and 
those who worship him worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming, called the Christ. And when he comes, he will show us all things. Jesus said to her, I will speak to you and he. I who speak to you and he. Just then the disciples came, they marveled that he was talking with a woman, but none said, What do you wish? Why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water and went away to the city. Come see a man who told me all that I had ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the city and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were so saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, the miracle of healing, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish it. Then you said there are four months that comes in harvest, and I tell you, lift up your eyes, and he who reaps receives wages and gathers. Mary Samaritan from this city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told all that I had ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with him and stay with him two, and they stayed with him two days. They said to the women, It is no longer because of your words that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves. We know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. God's word for God's people. Praise be to God. about that 
on this side of the earth, no matter your time frame that God has numbered on your head, that eventually you will leave this world, and yet you will have to thirst for something. The word that Jesus is speaking about is eternal life. What Jesus is speaking about is what happens to us once we leave this world. He's not talking about this physical water that's in the well, although he uses this as an example. The thirst, this human need, this human attainment, and human accomplishments. If I can remind you all today, those who are online, that success is always temporary. No matter how successful you become, no matter what you accomplish, no matter what you believe you can tap, all will pass away. And as Jesus is speaking to this woman, he's speaking to a woman who has her people have a very difficult history. Let me give you a few minutes of it, and let me ex expound how this relates to the Irish culture and, and, and the challenges and decades of war that the Irish culture has had to face just for independence. It's never always about what a person looks like. It's never even about the different genders. It's never even about what they have, but it's about how every war fought in Ireland had very, very much to do with man's continued urge for power, living water. And we find with the Samaritans, when Assyria conquered the northern kingdom in 722 BC, it exported half of its population to another country and imported Gentiles. The Jews who remained in the northern kingdom intermarried with the incoming foreigners. Thus, their Jewish purity was tainted. These racially mixed Jews became Samaritans. So the Samaritan people at Jesus' time were not seen as a people of great promise. They were seen as outcasts. They were seen as rejects. They were seen as less than. Let me flip it. People can brag about England and London and Europe, but there's always been a status with Europe that they believed that they were the center of power. And even in the midst when they wanted to fight and take over Ireland because they believed that the Irish were not to the same status of them. So let us take them over and make them part of us. And yet, that Irish blood, the blood that God flowed through their veins, allowed them to say, we are an independent people. And for God we live, for God we will die. When you look at the history of Ireland and the walls, you can almost say to yourself, wow, what a bloody history. But from the beginning of time, human beings have always in their minds believed and thought that they should always be in charge of everything, of one particular group. You can bring that back to Africa, from the Northern Africa going into Italy, it's always man's pursuit to take and grab. What are you getting at with this sermon, Pastor? What I'm getting at is that Jesus meets this woman in two areas, three areas of her life. He meets her in her thirst for water. He wants water, she wants water. She's at the well looking for a way to get the water. Jesus had been on a long journey. His disciples had gone into the town to get food, so Jesus wants the water. But he goes to the woman and says, give me a drink. Dealing with her physical need, his physical need. And then she said, knowing who Jesus was, Jews don't associate with Samaritans. Why would you ask me 
for a drink of water. And Jesus said, if you really knew what I came here for, if you really knew what I had for you, the water I will give you will make you live forever. And then Jesus goes to her next perspective, her sin. Her sin. She calls on a husband. And he said, that's not your husband. In fact, the five you just had were not your husband. This is a woman who's had many, many, many partners. So Jesus is meeting her in the midst of her troubles. Now you might say, having many partners is no trouble. But I know, and I don't know about you, but if I had five or six partners, I'd have some problems. Hello, Miss D. I'd have some problems, and so would you. And so he meets this woman in the midst of her problem and tells her, you don't have one husband, you don't even have the other four or five you have not even the husbands. See, what I love about Jesus Christ, what I love about what he represents is he meets you right where you are in your physical need. He meets you right where you are in your spiritual need, but he loves you too much to leave you where you are. Hear what I say to you. Yes, you can be struggling. Yes, you can have difficulty. But it's not God's will for anyone's life to just struggle, but to face the trials and tribulations that appear in their life. Jesus tells her, you Samaritans worship what you don't know. We worship what we do know, for salvation has come from the Jews. He is declaring right there that his purpose was to come for the Jew and the Gentile. But I start with the Jew. And he says that a time will come that we all shall be the true worship and worship the Father in spirit and in truth. This living water is Jesus stating his deity. This living water that Jesus is talking about is who he is. He is absent from the body and present with God. He is God in the flesh. He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What he said right in this text was, I am he, he identifies himself to the Samaritan woman before he even identifies himself to the Pharisees, to the Sadducees, which were Jewish scholars. He goes right where he knows where you are in the deepest situation. What's the good news in this text? The good news in this text, in this text is to us is that we too have that living water. As I was reading the information, as I was thinking out of uh, this month of the Irish community and how we're celebrating um, the Irish culture, the one thing I do wish we would do more of is celebrate its religious and powerful history of a people who stood and believed in their culture, in the God that sustained them and gave them iron. I wish we would talk more about the work they've done in their community to provide and sustain their community despite the many challenges. Instead of us looking at just the parade and them going to pubs, that's only a small segment of that rich history. The real rich history is how God protected this community, how God allowed them to be on the battlefield, how God preserved their country so they would not have to be forced to go somewhere or be something that they did not want to be. And that's what we find in our text here, that Jesus is talking to the Samaritan, telling the Samaritan, yes, you might be a Samaritan and I might be a Jew, but we are one in God, we are one in Christ. And that's what the Christian faith represents. It represents all of us with different walks of life, no matter what we look like, no matter who we are, coming together loving a God who sustains us and keeps us <coughs> despite us. Now, I don't deny their challenges. I had some challenges this morning just by changing the clock. <laughs> when every clock in your house 
saying one thing and the car saying one thing, but your watch is saying the right now. You're not looking at your watch. You get a little confused. But the goodness of God is this. The goodness of God is this, that still I rise and still I'm here. And that's the good news today, that despite the Samaritan woman's earthly situation, God was giving her spirit something greater that would last her. And even those five of the visions she was dealing with, and the disciples, and the Pharisees, and the Sadducees, and us on this March 12th, 2023, he gives us this true living water. And when we drink of that true living water, we do never thirst. What do I mean never thirst? When I know that I belong to God, I don't thirst anymore to get the money, the status of the world. When I have that living water, I know how to love those who don't love me. When I have that living water, I know how to forgive those who might not forgive me. When I have that living water and I rise up the next morning, I know that I get to wake up and it was the God that's in me and the God that's in you that woke us up. That's the true living water. The true living water makes you know that I'm only here because God is not true with me. And that's the true living water. Again, you will drink when you go downstairs. You will drink when you go home. You will drink this week. But I want you, I need you to drink the true living water. The living water that will bring more people into the kingdom. The true living water that will let your light shine when you go among people who are in trouble. The true living water that will never leave you nor forsake you. And his name is called Jesus the Christ. And that's what we're going to remember this Lent season. That's what we remember in this month of celebrating St. Patrick's Day that God sustained these people. God allowed these people work hard. And if any of you have ever seen Braveheart, you just get a glimpse of the, of the power of God to allow us to sustain and hold ourselves. But God doesn't want us to use the sword all the time. There comes a time where brothers and sisters in the faith must come together with other brothers and sisters and say, how can we make this world a better place for our future children and our grandchildren and great grandchildren. So I want you today, those who are alive, to not thirst again for the world, but just thirst for God. Amen. Our next hymn, hymn number 191, What Wondrous Love Is This? What Wondrous Love Is This? Hymn number 191.
for Kim, Annie, Rose, John, and Libby. We pray for Brian, Dell, Jason, Megan, Gabrielle, Richie, and Joe. We pray for Gloria, May, Coral, May. We pray for Michelle. We pray for ben, Peggy, Dickerson, Emma Maria, Kirk, and family, Keisha and family. And we pray for Pat, Judy, Jill, Jill, Doug, Joey, Joey, and Tom. We pray in silence prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, our be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou art the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
of those who give online. We thank you, God, for those who can give but want to give. Bless you that we work inside and outside the church. In Jesus' name, amen. Our next hymn is, Oh God, breathe thy guiding hand. In a time like, like as such as these, we need God to guide our hand.
Yeah. 